sense. Can we go to Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 7? And so it was, as a multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake or at the edge of the water. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets down for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boat so that they began to sink. Next verse, please. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. Put your hands together for the reading of God's word and for the truth contained therein. So we see that Jesus was at the edge of the lake. Now let's understand something about Jesus. Anything Jesus does has dynamic intention and purpose. Jesus is not some ordinary man. Jesus is not just a prophet as the Muslims say. Jesus came as the son of God. Jesus was the mind of God on legs. Jesus was the concept, the ideas, the thoughts, the precept of God in bodily form. So whatever Jesus did express exactly what God was thinking. Jesus said, I do what I see of my father. So everything Jesus did was calculated, time, and perfectly planned. So when Jesus came and stood at the water's edge and went to the boat, the barber says he went into the boat belonging to Simon. The barber says there were two boats. He could have went into the other boat, but he came to that boat, Simon's boat. This is the same Simon who Jesus said, I give you the keys of the kingdom. But before we could get to that, there has to be a beginning. So some way, somehow, God has to step into our boat. He steps into the boat and says to Simon, put the boat out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and began to teach the people from the boat. Jesus is the living word, releasing the word from Simon's boat. So before you can go into deep waters, the word has to get into your boat. And then the word has to begin to release word from your boat. When he finished speaking, then he said, put out, launch out, thrust out into deep waters. And then let down your nets for a catch. So what we see, there was shoreline teaching. There was simplistic teaching. Teaching given by the shoreline. Shallow teaching. Milk teaching. Beginning teaching, principle type teaching given on the shore. But then Jesus said, Peter, go out into the deep. Not only should you go out, I want you to launch out into the deep. If I say to you, move. When I say launch, you throw yourself out. Rockets are not moved into the sky. They are launched into the sky. So Peter, I want you to propel yourself into the deep. I want you to press into the deep. I want you to thrust yourself into the deep. And I am want you to do it because I, the maker of the sea, I, the maker of heaven and earth, are telling you that you have permission, access and keys to go into the deep. 
Novices cannot go into the deep. Beginners cannot go into the deep. But when I God speak and qualify you and call you and set you apart and say, go into the deep, I've given you permission, I've given you a way, I've opened the door, given you keys and said, go now into the deep. I came into your boat on the shoreline. I used your boat before. I gave simplistic teaching from your boat. I blessed other people from your boat, out of your boat, but now I want to bless you. Come on, sit to So now you leave the people on the shore, you move away from the shoreline, leave that teaching, and go out into the deep. He said, after he finished speaking, he told Peter. So after God speaks, there must be movement. Jesus said, launch out into the deep. The Greek for deep is the word bathos, meaning profundity, that which is profound, that which is mysterious, that which is hidden, that which is unseen. So Jesus was saying, launch into the mysterious. Launch into that which has never been seen before. Launch into a place that people can imagine but cannot see. I am permitting you to go into a new dimension. I'm pushing you to go into the bathos. Into a new realm. Into a new place. Profound means penetrating or entering deeply into subjects or thoughts of knowledge. Having deep insight and understanding. Being or going far beneath what is superficial, external, surface or obvious. It speaks of mysteries, hidden truth, hidden places, obscured things. So Jesus was saying to Peter, now imagine this was happening at the beginning of his calling. <laughs> Jesus has just met Peter, you know. This wasn't after 15 years of being saved. <laughs> but you see, when you've been called and chosen from the foundation of the earth, when you've been set apart from before when you were in your mother's womb, Jesus can change everything in one second. So he was saying, go into deep matters. Thrust yourself into the profoundly deep place. Go into the mystery, into territories previously uncharted. Go into the depths, deep things that exist but have not been discovered or experienced. Launch out into places that you cannot see with your eye, but you can perceive with your spirit. Now we know when you go to the seaside, you go on the shore and you, you put your feet in. But you go so far, unless you're really brave, you don't go no further. But you can look out and see the deep, but because you can see it doesn't mean you're in it. So sometimes you can feel in your spirit that something is deep, but you're not in it. You can be around the deep and not be in it. You can hear about the deep, talk about the deep, you can even teach about it, but it doesn't mean that you're truly in it. But Jesus said, launch out into and then put your neck in the deep. We can't see the deep with our physical eyes. But the Spirit of God searches the deep things and deep calleth unto 